So it's been one year since I switched over to the Fujifilm X-T3 for all my wedding photography and personal work. Do I regret it? What's up guys, Reggie B Photo here and welcome back to the channel. For those of you who are new, my name is Reggie Ballesteros and I'm a wedding photographer based in the San Francisco Bay Area. So at the time of filming this video, today is September 26, which means I've officially had the X-T3 for exactly one year and six days. And over the course of that year, I've been putting this camera through its paces for professional wedding photography, portraiture, engagement sessions, as well as using this camera for all my personal work to document my family life, travel, and of course create YouTube content like this for you guys. So this video is going to be my one year long term review of this camera specifically from the lens of a wedding photographer and someone who also uses this camera for personal work and YouTube content creation. So first things first, am I happy with the Fujifilm X-T3? And the short and simple answer is yes, I'm extremely happy with this camera and I'm really happy with what Fujifilm did with the APS-C format in the Fujifilm X-T3 by creating a camera that has high image quality, very powerful video capabilities, and of course packaging that in a small, compact, and very affordable body. This camera fits both my professional needs as well as my personal needs and fitting into my life seamlessly. And in addition to that, and sometimes even more importantly, is that my professional clients are very happy with the images. My wedding photography colleagues don't even realize that I switched from full frame to an APS-C camera. And last but not least, I'm super happy and excited that we've started this journey on YouTube together. We've created a small community and I think we're actually going to hit 5,000 subscribers very, very, very very soon. The next burning question is, do I regret switching over to the Fujifilm X-T3? And no, I do not. And kind of stemming off that, if I had to make the same decision today, considering the new mirrorless options that are out there, would I make the same decision and go with the Fujifilm X-T3? So my answer to this is twofold. If I was trying to go out and find the best wedding photography camera that's best for me, that's mirrorless, I probably would have went with the Nikon Z6. And let me explain this for a little bit. I had upwards up to $4,000 to $5,000 invested in Nikon glass, so it would make a lot more sense if I stuck with full frame and kept the image quality that I was familiar with and just kind of adapted the lenses using the FTZ adapter. But if you guys are familiar with why I made the specific decision to go with the Fujifilm X-T3, then you already know that wedding photography was not the only factor in coming up with what camera system I ended up with. If you want to know more about my reasons why I jumped over from a Nikon full frame camera over to the Fujifilm X-T3, please check out this other video I made linked up above or in the description down below as I kind of go into kind of why I jumped over to the Fujifilm X-T3, my transition struggles going from full frame to a crop sensor for wedding photography and as well as a lot of things that I did to kind of overcome those challenges and integrate the X-T3 into my wedding photography business. In short, in that video, I kind of explained that the choice of the X-T3 was to be able to condense down two camera systems, one that I had for personal and one that I had for wedding photography, down into just one simple system and one camera brand and one kit. For my situation, having one camera system to roll between wedding photography, personal work, and video work was kind of my end goal. And the Fujifilm X-T3 checked all those boxes. An important thing that I had to decide for myself was maximum flexibility over imposing creative constraints to allow for artistic freedom. And this is something that Andrew from the channel Danane Andrew introduced in his latest video about the X-Pro3 and I think the concept that he kind of explains really hits the nail on the head on why I kind of settled with the Fujifilm X-T3 and the things that I had to give up in order to switch over to it for wedding photography. So those who are driven by maximum flexibility purchase cameras based on the spec sheet and basically trying to get every single ounce of technology that they can have because of the fear of not having what's the latest and greatest in order to make them be a step ahead of the game in terms of their competition. And on the flip side, those who impose creative constraints and allow their artistic freedom to kind of flourish are shooting more with intent as opposed to capturing everything possible and figuring it out on the back end. So that's one thing I really had to make a decision for as, as a personal photographer, I really like the ability to have creative constraints using the Fujifilm system. And on Nikon, I was really coming from the world of maximum flexibility but the truth is as I began my photography journey of course I wanted flexibility in order to counteract the lack of experience I had in wedding photography 
But as I gain five years of experience of wedding photography, I think the next step for me to grow as a photographer and develop my voice as an artist was to impose creative constraint. Shooting with creative constraint has made me a sharper photographer overall and kept me really mindful about the settings that I use for each photo. But that's enough about the philosophy of photography and kind of my reasons why. Let's jump into kind of my key observations and a lot of the burning questions that you guys have about the Fujifilm X-T3. So a question I get a lot is, is the low light autofocus a problem for wedding photography, specifically with the large aperture prime lenses? And what are kind of my workarounds for that? So is it a problem? Well, the answer is really yes and no. The autofocus single or the AFS is very, very good in low light situations and it locks on very quickly and confidently, sometimes even better than what I did with the Nikon D750 in the past. But the one thing that kind of falls short is the autofocus continuous and low light of the Fujifilm X-T3 just isn't quite there yet, especially when paired with the 56mm 1.2 or the 35mm 1.4, any of those slower lenses. While I understand that the X-T3 has breathed new life as far as autofocus into these slower lenses, it still isn't quite there for some of those situations that are low light and high pace. So I'm thinking here of grand entrances for receptions, first dances in ballrooms, and also just kind of bridal processions in a low light church setting. I found that the best combo of settings to counteract that is to use autofocus continuous in the single point mode. From there, set your autofocus continuous to continuous set two. And then if you still think you're going to have a little bit of trouble, stop down your lens just a little bit, just for insurance. And in these situations too, I just tend to overshoot a little bit just to make sure that I at least get like one shot from each of these types of situations, whether it be the first dance or the bride coming down the aisle. You just have to make sure you get the shot. You don't have to get every single one be a keeper. As long as you're familiar with the limitations of the autofocus that this camera has. The next common question I get is the low light image quality, the high ISO performance and kind of the dynamic range in comparison to full frame. So I know there are a lot of Fuji fans out there that are going to say the dynamic range is on par with a full frame camera and sure maybe the amount of stops of dynamic range is going to be the same but the truth is there is going to be a little bit of more read noise in the X-T3 at least from what I've experienced through real world use and real world photos. And for me, the low light image quality and the high ISO performance is still just a little bit muddier. Yes, I understand that the grain of Fujifilm is a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, closer to film grain, but the truth is the full frame cameras just still have a little bit of edge in low light. Um, they're just cleaner files. And the other thing too is when you push them up in post, you have a lot more flexibility and headroom to do that without introducing noise. Whereas the Fujifilm X-T3, even if you're at base ISO of 160, once you start pushing it past two stops, you're introducing a lot more noise than, for example, a full frame file at ISO 400 stays fairly clean as much as pushing it up to like three stops or four stops. I know you guys are going to quote me on that and kind of do your own experimentations, but again, I'm just basing this on real world use and just kind of like feelings and observations that I've had from the past, just working with these files moving forward. And all these low light situations and high ISO situations can really just be mitigated by being very mindful of your settings, keeping an eye on your histogram and making sure you don't clip shadows and highlights where you shouldn't be. That that way you can get it right in camera, shoot with intent again, and just make sure that when you bring it into post you don't have to do much exposure changes and just reduce the noise from there. The only issue that I've yet to find a solution for is kind of shooting things that are far away in a church where you can't really get too close and you have to have a high ISO. So I think the only solution that can mitigate that is to have a longer zoom lens. I primarily shoot with primes at this point, but I'm really thinking about getting the 50 to 140 2.8 just as when the closer you get to the subject, the high ISO noise is not going to be as noticeable. So as opposed to using the 90 millimeter F2 and cropping in. I think the 50 to 140 is going to have an edge. The next popular question that I have a lot is Lightroom versus Capture One. Everyone knows that I use Lightroom and everyone asks, are you going to move over to Capture One? The answer is no, I'm not moving over to Capture One just simply because I'm very familiar with the Lightroom workflow. I'm very fast with it. I've been more than happy with the image quality and for me, it's more than enough for professional deliverable photos. I never had once got a client that came back to me and said, you should have been using Capture One to edit all these photos. The sharpening is fine. The noise reduction is fine. You just have to optimize these settings for the Fujifilm system and kind of balance that with your own personal threshold for noise in the photo. 
and yes, I know Lightroom has a recent update with the enhanced details feature, and I've tried experimenting with this for some type of landscape photos and very crazy detailed shots, but the truth is for most of my professional work, my personal work, I don't really find myself using this at all other than just that one time that I use it as a test. I'm in it for the long haul with Adobe and Lightroom merely because my editing process and the way that I have a quick turnaround for my professional photos is going to be more valuable than any type of like minor or s maybe it's significant, I don't know, image quality difference on Capture One. It simply just is not enough to drive me over to switch. I'd probably switch over to Nikon or another camera system before I move over to Capture One. So please, if you want me to keep creating Fujifilm content, stop asking me to switch over to Capture One. So another big question people have about using Fujifilm for wedding photography specifically with the X-E3 is reliability. So other than one wedding in October of 2018 where I had a lockup um, and basically the EVF just kind of like locked in the zoom and it wouldn't really change its display, I popped the battery out and popped it back in and it got to working right away. This was fixed with the first firmware update and other than that I've never had any issues with lockups ever since. Lockups are not an issue for me at all. I have noticed that in one of the recent firmware updates when I'm shooting in high frames per second and I think in continuous autofocus mode. Um, there are these like little green bars that kind of pop up when I'm shooting off bursts, specifically in the EVF. It doesn't seem to show up in the LCD. These green bars don't show up in the photo so it doesn't really mess with the image quality but that is something that I've noticed that's kind of weird that some of you might think is an issue but again if it doesn't show up in the final photos why does it matter as far as durability goes uh, for using a Fujifilm X-T3 for professional wedding photography every week the bodies are holding up fine and the lenses actually have nicer build quality than the more expensive Nikon lenses I had in the past for example the 58 millimeter 1.4 G is like $1,600 or something and the body was pretty much all plastic whereas even the $400 $500 Fuji lenses are all metal and they have nice aperture rings and everything so I don't have have any qualms about the build quality of the camera or the lenses. While I don't trash my photography equipment, I also don't baby it either. They're holding up more than fine. The only thing I've yet to kind of explore is cleaning my sensor. I think after this year, this wedding photography season, I do need to explore kind of my options for cleaning a mirrorless sensor. So if you have any tips on that, let me know. All right, so next up, I want to go into both my positives and negatives for using the Fujifilm X-T3 for professional wedding photography and portrait work. So my first positive, which isn't specifically a unique Fujifilm X-T3 feature, but it's a positive nonetheless is the EVF. I absolutely love using an EVF and it's been a game changer for both my wedding photography and my portrait photography and it's really the thing that's kind of anchored my ability to again shoot with intent, choose the correct settings because I have the highlight warning on there, I have the histogram on there, I can in real time preview my composition, my depth of field. I don't think I can ever go back to shooting with a traditional optical viewfinder anymore. Another thing that I like the Fujifilm X-T3 for is for the 100% phase detect autofocus across the entire sensor. So for me, back button focus is not necessary anymore as I can directly pick which autofocus point I want to use for both autofocus single and continuous. And having this phase detect autofocus available on the EVF in the live view has opened up the doors for different angle shots as well as just kind of like tracking subjects moving across the sensor. And related to the phase detect autofocus across the whole sensor is the LCD. I absolutely love and need a tilty as LCD screen for all my photography because I'm short. Um, <laughs> I shoot sometimes clients that are taller than me and being able to kind of hold the camera above and shoot up high or down low is very very awesome and being able to do that with the full power of the autofocus capabilities of the camera is a very helpful thing. Another thing too is I like the fact that the X-T3 and the Fujifilm X-T line has the ability to do the vertical low angle shots um, because not many cameras I think out there have that capability. It's only just like up and down and not really that vertical low angle shot. Another positive for the X-T3 for wedding photography is having the dual card slots. Um, being able to record redundant data on the wedding day is immensely important as far as keeping data safe and the photos safe for the couple and the clients. 
and not really specifically related to the X-T3, but I absolutely love the Fujifilm lens selection. So all the lenses are fairly modern, like the oldest one is like 2012 or something. So they're all pretty new lenses. Um, some are older than others, but for the most part, I've had positive experiences with every single lens that I've chosen to put in my arsenal. Um, they're all sharp. The autofocus is some slower on some of them, faster on others, but as far as micro contrast, sharpness, and just pure image quality, um, I have nothing but praise for the Fujifilm X series lens lineup. And again, having the aperture ring on all the lenses is a game changer for me as I can have all the controls at my fingertips. And the last positive that I have um, moving over the mirrorless is I don't have to fine tune or AF calibrate my lenses to my bodies anymore and that is awesome because it saves me a lot of time and I'm able to rent gear without having to calibrate it like it really is an awesome thing. So on to the negatives of the X-T3 for wedding photography. And I wouldn't say that any of these things are actually like big deal breakers, but they are things that are just kind of like annoying or nice to kind of improve in future iteration. So the first is the battery life. I really don't think the battery life is a big issue, but if they increase the battery life, I wouldn't complain about it. I mean, you use approximately six full batteries across two bodies on an eight hour wedding day. And I actually prematurely change the batteries. I don't wait till they fully exhaust. I prematurely change the batteries before the ceremony starts and before the reception starts, just because I don't want my camera failing on me and dying on me during these critical parts of the wedding day. And the one thing I, that does kind of suck is I bring 10 batteries on the day just for insurance and charging 10 batteries the night before a wedding is kind of a pain. But I figured out my own system of using a five port USB charger that charges five different dual Fuji battery chargers. It's a little bit of a octopus looking thing, but it works for me. So the next negative um, I have with the X-T3 is I actually wish they didn't increase the resolution of the camera. I wish they kept it at whatever the X-T2 had, which was I think 24 megapixels because increasing that up to 26 really kind of introduce a lot more kind of artifacts and noise because you're cramming it into the same size sensor than before. Um, I think that if they use a smaller resolution sensor along with the backside illuminated technology. This would have really helped to kind of increase the readout of the camera, make it faster at the same time, keep the same low light benefits that the X-T2 and the X-H1 had. That's just kind of a nitpick there, but again, I'm still happy with the Fujifilm X-T3. The low light performance has been enough for my professional wedding photography at this point. So it's, again, it's not a deal breaker. And of course, for wedding photography, I could always use faster autofocus in the Kaizen updates. If you want to give me faster autofocus, I'll take it. I would just kindly welcome better low light autofocus, better continuous autofocus, um, just because you can never have too much of that when you're dealing with moving things and weddings and that kind of thing. And one other negative that I have about the camera is the lack of a user custom mode, um, kind of like the U1, U2 that they have on Nikon or the C1, C2 they have on Sony. Basically, I wish they had a way to kind of like map out all your predetermined settings that you want to save to a bank and just you have some situation that you want to use for flash photography, for video B-roll, for just um, video with sound and just normal capturing. Like I wish th there was a way to kind of pre-program those so you can just press with one button, turn a dial or something so you have all those settings at your fingertips. I do realize that the physical dials are the limitation of this, but since they have the movie silent control mode, it shows that they can decouple the settings from the dials. So if you can somehow incorporate a way for us to kind of have more flexibility, that would be something that I would really like to have in future X-T3s or future Fujifilm cameras. Okay, so next is the positives and negatives for my personal work, which includes basically documenting my family, using the camera for travel, videography, and YouTube content creation. So the first pro obviously is the small and lightweight size of the camera. I absolutely love this because it doesn't take up too much room in a bag. It's very manageable when I'm going out with my family. I have two young kids under three years old, so it's something that I need to have the camera be not really distracting from what I gotta do as a dad. Um, having a compact camera is pretty awesome and I think having a combat camera with this perfect balance of very high image quality and video capabilities is something that's very cool that Fujifilm did and they should get a lot of kudos for. 
and kind of stemming off this having one camera to do it all between wedding photography personal work videography youtube content creation basically having one camera that i can have like complete muscle memory and familiarity with the controls is awesome i don't lose a step whether i'm doing personal stuff video or wedding photography the controls are all the same when i was back on nikon i would kind of have to recalibrate myself and my muscle memory each day that i did a professional job versus using my fujifilm xct for personal work at this point the camera is a true extension of kind of my body and I like having one camera system to do everything that I need it to do. The next positive is the video capabilities of this camera even though I use it primarily as a stills camera. So having 400 megabits per second, 4K, 60 frames per second, 120 frames per second all at my fingertips is something that basically inspired me to jump down the rabbit hole of video work, content creation, and cinematography and it's been keeping it fresh for me. So that is a really big positive is that this camera can grow with you. You can focus on stills, you can focus on videography, or you can jump over to the other side. Basically this camera will grow with you. It's if you're a beginner or even a professional and want to have a fresh perspective on the other side of the craft. The next positive is the camera is just really fun to use. I mean, I don't personally use the physical dials and controls. I use the command dials for most of my changing of exposure. But regardless, it's a really fun camera to use. It looks cool. It garners a lot of attention. And because the camera is fun and looks cool, um, you're going to be inspired and encouraged to kind of take it out more and use it and practice more. So that is a cool positive about the camera. A positive that I have just for personal work, obviously, is the straight out of camera JPEG. So for all my professional work, I use primarily and exclusively raw images and edit those in Lightroom and deliver them as JPEGs. But for straight out of camera usage, I don't really use that for professional work. But on the personal side, maybe I'm shooting my niece's first birthday party or something like that. And I take a lot of photos and I have to go sit and edit all those. But the celebrant, the parents want to have a couple photos to post on Instagram that evening. On the straight out of camera JPEGs, I can just shoot a few over to my phone, send it to them, and it kind of gets them off of my back so that they want bother me saying like hey where are the photos we want to post them now jpegs allow me to kind of give that to them because they're not photographers they don't really care too much and it still gives me the time to put proper time into editing the photos the way that i want to and another positive of the, about the camera and the camera system is the price. I mean, to be able to have a premium camera and access to all the premium line lenses of a manufacturer at a lower cost is awesome. Because when you go over to Sony or Nikon or Canon, even though they have crop offerings, those are not the top tier pieces of equipment that they offer. On Fujifilm, it is. Like, I understand that there's a GFX system, but they still pay a lot of attention and it put a lot of main focus into the X-Series line. And that is cool to have the all these things and all the access to all these lenses and gear at a lower price point to build a complete kit that's a fraction of the cost of a complete kit of Sony or Nikon or Canon for their mirrorless offerings. And last but not least, a big positive for my personal side of photography is being able to be part of this Fujifilm community and give you guys content and share my experiences and help you guys learn to get better and be better at photography. A big highlight was being able to be recognized and invited on to the FujiCast, the podcast created by Kevin Mullins and Neil James. That was really awesome and it brought a lot of people from that podcast over to my channel. I'm excited to keep making more content for you guys and keep connecting with all you guys out there as we grow the audience and the community. So the negatives that I have about using the X-E3 for my personal work is first has to do with hybrid shooting. So basically switching over quickly between taking photos and taking videos. I don't think there still is a really good way to kind of switch over quickly. Yes, they have the movie silent control mode that you can kind of decouple the settings and switch over, but I still don't think it's a bulletproof solution because other negative is the camera does not have a shutter angle priority mode, which basically would change the shutter speed based on the frames per second that you're shooting. I wish it had something like this. This is something that Panasonic has. But I think with Fujifilm getting more serious about videography, they should really consider putting that into their bodies. So they're negative. It's just kind of unrelated to Fujifilm X-T3, but it's something that I learned as I started sharing content about the camera is I don't really like how polarized the Fujifilm community is about things that really don't matter if you guys like the final images. So what I'm talking about is like the battle between Lightroom and Capture One, or IBIS and not using IBIS, or whether someone should have weather resistant lenses or not, or if somebody does straight out camera JPEGs that are accurate to the Fujifilm color science, or if somebody edits their own RAWs and puts their own twist and style to it. At the end of the day, if you like the person's photos, is there really a reason to kind of nitpick what type of dynamic range setting they use or what ISO they use? Again, Fujifilm is about photography 
and now they're starting to get more about videography. Really no need to critique someone about the settings if you have nothing to offer about the photo or the video itself. That's just my opinion because at the heart of things, photography and the imagery is what matters, not the camera operation. Like the camera operation is second to the final output. That's just me. So next up, I wanted to talk about quick tips, any type of gear changes that I had, just basically anything that I think would be useful to you that I've learned over the course of the year of having the X-T3 and using it as my main workhorse camera. So the first thing that I find super useful is being able to use the 11 frame per second burst bracketing. And this really helps to kind of mitigate any type of dynamic range kind of insecurities that you might have when shooting raw. Basically, in order to do this, you just go into your menu, go up to the shooting mode and go to the drive setting, go to um, bracket setting, then you're gonna go to AE bracket, which is auto exposure bracket. And then for the frames and step counting, I personally use seven frames with one step. And then um, I put mine to one frame continuous. And then for the sequence settings, I do underexposed, uh, metered, and overexposed. And what this does, it lets you be able to put your camera in bracket mode. And uh, once you aim it out, and once you press one button, one press of the shutter button, it rattles off um, 11 frame per second burst. So something like this. And that is pretty awesome because there's not a lot of camera shake that's involved to get that whole bracketed burst. Another thing is um, definitely if you're using the EVF, turn on preview exposure mode, turn on the highlight warning, map a button out to do the live view histogram, the larger one. So keep an eye on the shadows. And if you can shoot in manual, just because with preview exposure on in manual, like you really have no reason to not shoot in manual anymore because it's pretty obvious if a photo is underexposed or not with all the tools that the EVF offers you. Another thing is if you're going to use flash, map a button to preview exposure on and off because when you're shooting with flash you want to turn off preview exposure just to simplify things and so you can see better in the dark. Some other key learnings that I have is the AFS is definitely faster and quicker and better in low light than AFC. So if you have anything that's not moving too fast just use AFS. I use that pretty much for 90% of the time and I only use AFC for basically um, when the bride comes down the aisle if anybody is walking or any type of like reception entrance or high paced dancing or something like that um, but for portraits anything that's still or anything that's just kind of just like pure documentary work I'm using AFS most of the time and if you're using AFC, it's very good to just put it to as little points as possible. If you're using AFC in single point, you're going to get a lot more mileage because the camera doesn't have to think about as much and it's not going to kind of like waver and bring the point to somewhere it's not supposed to. So practice at tracking better with the single point. You're going to get a lot more mileage out of the performance of the AFC mode. My favorite continuous setting is set to, which is basically um, to ignore obstacles and continue to track. I use this for most cases throughout all my photography. The only time I'll change it is I'll change it to the erratic one just continue to set five usually when I'm just taking photos of my kids and I can't really predict where they're gonna go as much as I want to love and use the face and eye tracking that's updated for the X-T3 honestly I still don't think it's quite up to par for professional settings so I urge you not to use it at this current firmware for any professional work rather use AFS in single point and just pick the point instead of using face and eye tracking this really isn't up there yet for professional work especially in low light fast-paced situations I'm hoping in future updates it's gonna get better but at this point just just don't use it yet um, the only other time that I really use the face 9 tracking is when I'm doing personal work and taking photos of my kids and I'm too lazy to track them like super closely um, so I might just throw on the face 9 tracking just because and the only other situation I use it is for stuff like right now for video work when I'm doing a talking head type of video I use the face 9 tracking for that and my last and probably most important kind of like quick tip for settings is do not, do not, do not underexpose if you don't have to. Um, because just with a crop sensor camera, any type of time you're gonna rely to push the exposure back in post, you better hope you're at the lower ISOs. Once you do it at the higher ISOs, it's better to just expose at the correct ISO, correct exposure than underexpose the ISO a little bit and push it back in post. Just learn from me, it's not gonna come out good if you don't just expose properly or expose to the right and just turn on the highlight warning and just make sure that you're okay with whatever you're blowing out in the highlights. So for those who are buying a Fujifilm X-T3 or any other Fuji body um, and don't have any other lenses and you're thinking about going with prime lenses, I still urge you to just buy the 18 to 55 millimeter 2.0 to f4 lens with the, the whole kit just because you do get a cost savings and that lens is probably one of the best all around lenses that I've used on Fujifilm at this point, um, especially for personal photography and videography. The 
OIS on that is very nice for handheld video and the sharpness and image quality is really nice too if you don't need like super low light capabilities. It's something that I had to purchase afterwards once I started doing more YouTube content creation and I wish I just had bought it up front with one of the XE3s. So as far as my flash system goes, I've been using the Young Newell flashes for most of the wedding season until my most recent wedding which I switched over to the Godoxes and I really wish that I just jumped onto the Godoxes first um, because they just seem to be a lot more reliable as far as syncing goes. Young Nuos had a like 1 over 125th sync speed even though the native sync speed of the XT3 is 1 over 250 the second. With the Godoxes I'm getting better sync speeds but I'm still just trying to manage kind of what my off-camera flash power should be. I'm thinking of the 8200s because I got a lot of thermal warnings when I shot my last wedding with the off-camera flash. I think I was using the 860s or something like that that I borrowed from a friend who had them as extra flashes. So again um, if you want to start off with a flash system for X-T3s or just Fujifilm in general, I recommend going with the Godoxes, even if you're planning to shoot all manual. I wanted to make the Young Newells work, but they just, they just didn't cut it. So this part has a good segue for me to kind of mention what are future plans I have for my Fujifilm kit. So basically, again, I'm going to transition over from Young Nuo over to Godox for all my on-camera and off-camera flashes. Basically going to build that around the Godox V1 on-camera and the Godox 8200s off-camera. Hopefully I'm going to have two on-camera and three off-camera by the end of the year, hopefully. And what I mentioned before about the low-light image quality, I am considering adding a 50 to 140 2.8 to my kit once I get a little bit more money um, just because I think having that closer crop getting closer to the subject is going to be able to counteract how noticeable high ISO noise is in low light church settings and that kind of thing and I actually shoot quite a bit of church weddings so it's something that I need to kind of consider implementing into my kit sooner than later. Okay, so what do I want to see in future XT3 updates, um, firmware updates? And I kind of touched on some of these before already. Uh, basically, my wish list would be faster and better in low light autofocus, both in single point and continuous. Um, that's really important for me and probably the most important for me for wedding photography. As far as face and eye tracking go, um, I'm fine living without it, but if you made something that was really, really good, uh, maybe I'll start implementing it for my professional work. So better face and eye tracking would be nice to have. Have. Again, I'd like to have some custom user modes and then also I'd love to have a video shutter angle priority mode on the video side. And then so what are my hopes and wishes for either future Fujifilm cameras or the X-T4? And I think my main wish is that they actually don't increase the resolution and maybe even reduce it just a little bit just so you can have better low light performance as far as image quality goes. Other than that, I actually think the X-T4 3 is pretty good of a camera so I don't really want them to change too much of it. Also just probably just like make a better battery. <laughs> That's pretty much it. That's pretty much all I would want. And to go off onto what are my hopes for future Fujifilm uh, cameras and gear and things that I'd like to have just to further keep me invested in this camera system and lineup. I really wish they were going to make the 33mm 1.0 but um, at this point yeah I'm happy to explore to see what the 50mm 1.0 will bring. Um, hopefully it has faster autofocus than the 56mm 1.2, otherwise I think the depth of field is actually going to be pretty similar, so I don't really know what advantages that lens is going to bring. But in general, as a wedding photographer and a professional user of the Fujifilm X series cameras, I am more than willing to accept larger lenses in lieu of like better and shallower depth of field just because, yes I know I can go over to the full frame side, but Again, I want to have one camera system to do it all, so if they introduce it, of course, I'm going to purchase that and use it for my wedding photography arsenal. In addition to that, I hope they just kind of update all the good lenses they have at this point. So an 18mm f2 Mark II would be cool, 56mm 1.2 Mark II would be cool, and a 35mm 1.4 Mark II would be cool. Just improving the autofocus overall and just make it more silent, faster, and just improving the image quality would be something that I think everyone would want. If you guys have any questions, Questions about the Fujifilm X-T3 if you're trying to figure out if this camera for you and I didn't cover something specific let me know down in the comments below what your questions are what questions you have if you want to see more Fujifilm X-T3 content I have a playlist linked up above for the X-T3 and down in the description below 
again thanks so much guys for following me along this journey of one year with Fujifilm X-T3 and one year of content and one year of connecting with all you guys out there be sure to subscribe if you haven't already I make a new Fujifilm photography video every other week like these two and also follow me on Instagram if you want to follow my work as I post a new photo every single day and that's it for me remember to get out go shoot and I'll catch you guys in the next one